All right. So this is part two of fuel injection on a YZF600R. Uh, so these are the 04 R6 throttle bodies I'll be using. Um, so we're going to start by kind of disassembling them. So there's, this is partially disassembled right now because uh, I was kind of using this set for parts. Um, watch out because there's actually two different sizes for the inlets. I'm not sure if it was like an 05 thing or what. Um, so we're going to take off our fuel rail, our little uh, cold advanced thing, and then we're going to take out these long bolts and we can separate the uh, throttle bodies. Um, so, I borrowed the part off this one to re remake the ones I was using, but your throttle turn is down here, and then your throttle position sensor, wait no, your throttle position sensor is down here, and then your turn for your throttle is over here. So what you have to do is take these long bolts out, take everything off and separate them. And uh, the little springs are off this, so they're kind of a pain to get together. But uh, I will show you how it works. Okay, take that off. So now our oh, so we got vacuum lines attached. All right, so what I did was basically do this. So this is the throttle one. This is the throttle position sensor one. So one and four are going to be paired together now. Um, so that all, like the spacing of it works, um, but then we will make a spacer. So you'll end up having to space these apart because the uh, timing chain's in the middle on the uh, 600R. And then we're going to have to uh, link the throttle to that. So I will show you on my other ones once I get there, but uh, that's basically the idea of it. Um, these are just to allow fresh air like to breathe on the top of the uh, vacuum slides here. Uh, so you'll take out the elbows. So I think it's just on these two that the elbows exist. I already pulled one off, but uh, you can just grab them with some vice grips and turn and pull and those come right off. All right, so here is an example of the throttle body boots that I used. So these are the uh, R6 throttle body boots. And basically all you really have to do is chop off this end and then extend that hole over. The bottom flange is completely aluminum. So these bolts are like really tight against that uh, boot, but it works. Um, so one of the things you're gonna run into is because these are kind of canted different ways, this little, uh, this little like thing for the fuel injector doesn't line up perfectly. Um, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, that's the way it's supposed to be. These ones are canted. Um, some fuel will kind of catch on that edge, but it really is minor. And then your ports don't necessarily line up. Um, I did a stupid thing and I kind of smoothed it out with some RTV before I figured out that you're not supposed to do that because gas eats RTV. Uh, but it seems to be holding up there decently. Uh, you could port match these. Um, you could make some custom uh custom like billet pieces that sit on here and then you could just use like a like a silicone coupler um so this is going to work for using these which is about the cheapest option uh you can also i've seen you can uh basically rubber cement together something using your original boots if that's what you have in mind but this is how i'm doing mine um, so these are our six ones um, then I think these are clamps from somewhere else in the 600R thing. I just put longer bolts in to work because my things didn't come with clamps. But anyways, I'm going to throw some throttle bodies on here and show you about the other stuff. All right, so we got our boots modified and installed. And then so this is, you know, the throttle body side, which we're just going to call one. The throttle position sensor, which I'm going to call four. And then here's two and three just kind of hanging out. And what we have to do is we have to weld on a bracket to this spool so it can interact with the throttle bodies along the way. Now there's supposed to be a spring in here. I don't have it in there just for mock-up. Um, but this is a pretty thick, like eighth inch piece of steel. It has to be thick, otherwise it will not work out. But basically all you have to do to get this in place is make yourself a little 
angled piece of metal, stick it in there with the spring so you get the spacing right, everything together, tack it, tack it, take it off, do your finish welding you find necessary, and then that interacts with the other throttle bodies. Um, now, other thing we're gonna have to do, I'm gonna pull this off so it's easier to see, is we're gonna have to modify our cable bracket. This is the cable bracket off the R6 stuff. Um, so originally, that hole lined up with that hole, and then there's a little pin in this little one. Um, so you shave down that little pin, then you can rotate this bracket up after bending it out slightly to clear. And then we had to weld this, focus, weld this a little shorter. And that looks like porosity, but it's actually just where I cut it with a hacksaw. Um, so we weld it up, and then we also had to trim off the little piece here that the throttle stopped against. Um, so we will have to put together something like that if we want to. Otherwise, we can just let it like potentially over rotate a little bit. It doesn't really matter too much. I'll put that back in there so you can see kind of how all that fits together. Um, so now we need to get an accurate space between those two things to make a spacer. And then same thing down here between that bracket and that little thing right there. So we can take our measurements and the more precise you can get this, the better it'll make everything else just function better in the long run. Um, then for bolts. Um, so I could not find long enough bolts. So what I ended up getting instead was some all thread. Yes, you can apparently get metric all thread, but you know, metric all thread from the right places. But this kind of just goes in there and one of these sides is threaded. I think it's this one. Yeah, this side is threaded. So the bolts go through, thread into there and I have a lock nut and basically it all kind of comes together like that. So it's gonna take a little trial and error to get the spacing perfect. Um, you can cut a spacer out of like some uh, big transmission line tubing or something like that and then use washers on the end to make sure that your spacing is just right. All right, so here's kind of where we're at. I decided for my spacers to weld a bunch of nuts together, then just a couple of washers on either side to uh, adjust the play. Um, I did run into a problem down here, if you can see it. The cable kind of runs through where this bolt is. Um, and then you can see before where I, my old kind of setup, I was rubbing on the valve cover. So I'm really not quite sure what the best approach is for this. Um, this is kind of what I've came up with so far. Um, but I mean, like the throttle works, it's a little sticky, but you see it rubbing. I don't know if it'll focus. You can see how it rubs on that. I smoothed that out to the best of my ability. The throttle pretty much snaps closed. So anyways, got that. All of these are seated down all the way into the boots. And then I've tightened up the uh, through bolts, which I put a tack on the end of them, just so it acts more like a bolt than a stud. Um, so that's pretty much pretty much where we're at. Uh, so next, I'm going to take these off, put my springs back. Oh, 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 right, right, right. Yeah, put my little springs back, and then we should be able to. Uh, there, then I'll start showing you guys the uh, fuel rail. All right, so we got the throttle bodies in and, you know, semi-permanently mounted. Of course, they will come back off again later. Uh, but now it's time to work on the fuel rail. So I managed to get this from a, a hydraulic shop. It's just a little piece of hydraulic line they had left over. They gave it to me for free. Um, I don't know exactly how, you know, if you guys have access to something like that. Um, but uh, so this fits, as you can hear, really snugly into the uh, fuel rail. So basically I cut the fuel rail in half and I slipped this piece between them. And now I am going to weld it together. Now I don't recommend that you weld something like this. I can't recommend that because you know, what if something happens? But uh, this is what I did. Um, I've also seen uh, somebody who did one to an FZ 
that you can just use a piece of high pressure uh, fuel line between them. Uh, so that's an option. I don't really know. Like I figured welding it is a more permanent solution. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to tack this in and then I'll show you guys how I converted mine to, uh, uh, to our, uh, returnless fuel system. So that's pretty simple. All right. Now we have the fuel rail installed. Um, so we got that welded up nice and solid. Um, it doesn't, I don't think I'll have any leaks or anything like that. Um, if you're not a proficient welder, definitely don't do this. But, uh, then I, uh, I have a returnless fuel pump from an R1 uh, sunk into the tank. Uh, so if you're doing the returnless route, um, you can take off or cut off the fuel pressure regulator and weld up the uh, hole in it. And then that just makes this, you know, one thing, no return. Uh, so you can use it as a returnless fuel rail. Um, my old one was a little different. Uh, it was actually threaded in here. So I was able to just put a uh, pipe thread in there, but this one was smooth. I don't, I don't know why they come both ways, but either way, um, little differences over the years. Yeah, I just welded that up and that's there. Um, so now I have my cable bracket for the uh, uh, idle advanced stuff, or yeah, the, anyways, the warm up stuff. Um, I might have to recreate that bar because basically why I'm recreating all this stuff is uh, I was a little too tight here in the middle and it wasn't sitting, fitting the boots super well down here. So I decided to redo it all and uh, I figured I'd show you guys along the way. But uh, I also didn't like how that fuel cable or how that throttle cable was and it's still a problem. So <laughs> we're making small progress. But anyways, I'm going to check out that... Uh, rod next and uh, we're getting close to done. All right, so I'm gonna redo that uh, idle up rod in a uh, different video. Uh, I'm gonna have to make a new one and I accidentally put these two throttle bodies in the wrong order. And the only thing that really matters for is uh, one's got a threaded hole and one doesn't. So that kind of screwed things up a little bit. I will fix that later. Um, I wanna kind of get this thing back together and running and seeing, uh, you know, making sure everything's good. Uh, so the air box was a conglomeration. I will probably show another video on how I made it, but basically I kind of took an R6 box and I, uh, the YZF600R box and welded it together. And I got this kind of basic, uh, ABS sheeting to fill in and box it up. And then I basically window welded it with a strong rubber and uh, sealed it all up tight. So it still uses a factory air filter and uh, fits the front ram air pretty good. Um, but anyways, uh, I'm gonna finish sewing this up and uh, I f let me know if you guys have any questions. Now we'll cover those in a future video. Um, I'll plan on being under here again to uh, do that with the uh, idle up and all that stuff. Oh, uh, wiring for this. Um, so I added the air intake temperature sensor right here in the air box. It's just a GM sensor uh, wired up to the computer. Throttle position sensor. Uh, the plugs are the same, I believe. But anyways, if you can get a uh, set of R6 throttle bodies with the wiring harness on it, that's beneficial because then you will have all these injector plugs. Uh, now, just remember when you're wiring this that uh, two and four are going to be together. Oh, sorry, one and four are going to be that together, and uh, two and three are going to be together. Um, I kind of mixed that up a little bit the first time, but Let's get those plugs on. And see. then that's pretty much it. Um, so that should get you running. And uh, I will go over. Oh, I will go over the how I made the uh, fuel tank with the uh, fuel pump install or fuel pump inside of it, so you don't have to run an external one. Makes it a lot quieter, and uh, that's nice because the factory part. Um, but anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, more to come.